Hi there everybody, and welcome to my new beginner's tutorial series for Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. I'm Icon, and in this series I'm going to give you everything you need to enjoy this classic roguelike. The best about it is, it's entirely free to play. All you need to do is check out the link in the description box down there, select the best fitting server for your location, create an account, and you're good to go. DCSS has many years of development time and has a ton of content. So let's hop right into it, right? So here we're going to play on the latest experimental version, so the so-called trunk version. It's up to you which one you take, but if you want to have the latest features and the newest developments, trunk is way to go. I never uh, have regretted playing there. It's really good. So we're going to get there and now we have to select our species, but first a couple of words about what, how DCSS works and what you have to expect. So Dungeon Crawl is a classic roguelike, that means permadeath. If you die, you're gone, you have to restart. There's a lot of randomization in this game, no dungeon will truly be the same, and there's a couple of uh, elements though that are handcrafted by humans, so it's basically a mixture of procedural generated content with handcrafted bits and bobs in between that give you a really cool experience, which makes no run ever the same. Really, really, really recommendable. So your job is to dive into the deepest depths of the dungeon, recover the Orb of Zod and make it out alive. That's pretty difficult because if you die you have to restart and it's uh, it took me several years to get there. <laughs> so on this part I want to th say thanks to all the awesome other you know, content creators for DCSS which basically taught me how to do this. So let's get into this and follow the tradition. At the species selection, we're going to roll with a Minotaur here. There's a ton of races to play here, only a couple of sentences about that. Every race here is very distinct. There's a deep difference between every race and they have all a, a unique gameplay flavor. And despite the fact that there's a lot of races here, they, they really work out and give you a completely different gameplay experience. As you can see, there they are uh, sorted in simple, intermediate, and advanced. We're going to play, of course, a simple one. And the Minotaur is really good at fighting. And we're going to play a fighter for this tutorial series because this game is very massive and deep. And playing a fighter will still teach you everything you need to know to, to branch out with your knowledge and, and learn everything from this point on. Don't you worry. So we're going to pick up the Minotaur race and here we have to select our background. That's something like a character class, but not really. The background defines only a couple of things when you create your character. How your stats are distributed, strength, dexterity, intelligence, what you wield and wear, what kind of equipment you have on yourself, and last but not least, the skills you start the, your adventure with. We're going to select the fighter because the fighter is a well-rounded package which not only melds very good into the natural skills of the Minotaur, but, on, but also features heavy armor, a shield which helps you not getting, uh, which helps a lot at not getting hurt, and a pretty decent weapon to start with. Now, the Weapon of choice here is up to you basically, we're going to roll with a longsword. The number here behind shows how well you will learn the usage of that weapon. Basically the more plus aptitude it has here, the better. We're going to roll with a longsword. Okay, and here we're finally at the dungeon. So, here at the center of the screen you see the environment. There's lots of things there going on around you and, well, most of it is pretty self-descriptive right now. There's plants and walls and floors, but if you ever struggle and want to know what stuff is, you can examine it. I'm going to show you how in a couple of minutes, but for now we want to go over the user interface in total. So down here is the message box, really important part of the game because, you know, everything that happens is shown down here. Up here at the upper right corner you have your character stats and stuff. I'll go over these in detail in the course of the series. The base things here first. Health, 
If this goes to zero, you're dead. Over here are your stats, strength, intelligence, and dexterity. Strength is influencing how hard you hit, dexterity is influencing how good you are at dodging and blocking, and intelligence roughly is good is influencing how good you are at spell casting. Over here are your defensive stats. AC is for negating damage, evasion and shield are the other stats, and they they basically let you completely evade attacks if they are successful. The higher the numbers, the better in this department, and same goes for the other side. You have here a couple of things next. How your experience level, how high your experience level is. The maximum is 27 right now as far as I know. And well, the rest here is pretty self-explanatory except for the noise bar maybe. This is describing how much noise you are producing. Gray is silent, red is extremely loud. Pretty simple so far. Okay, that's only, there's only now the minimap left to um, mention, but I think this goes into an honorable mention. Now, you will move in this game with the numblock. The, make sure the numblock is lit, that uh, little uh, button at the uppermost left corner at most numblocks on, on keyboards. And then you can use that like a compass rose to move like 8 for north, 2 for south, and so on. This is pretty important because this allows diagonal movement, and as we see here, this is a nice uh, example already, we would struggle with the arrow keys alone. Okay, so now we know how to move. That's a good start, isn't it? We go now into a couple of important um, keyboard controls here. So the first thing that I find pretty important is how to uh, whip up your inventory. That's pressing I. Small I in that case. It brings up all the items that you carry around with yourself. And well, if you want to examine them, examine them closer, you just have to press the button that's associated to them. You see, there's an A associated to the longsword, a B to the scale mail, and so on and so forth. So I press small A now, and I get a big uh, informational readout. And well, if you struggle with uh, what stuff does, this is way to go to identify it. These things are, for me, the most fundamental things because this game has a massive wealth of information and accessing that information is, in my opinion, one of the most important things. So this is how you investigate things in your inventory. We see here that Potion of Might increases the power of a drinker's melee attacks, which is insane. This potion is powerful. It's an instant kill against most things. but. We're going to use that later down the road. The other thing, if you want to check out something into the environment, I mentioned that a moment before, is you press X, small X in that regard, and then you can use the numpad to control that little uh, yellow cursor thing. And if you move it over something, you see, there, here over the plant, and then you press small V, you get a readout about what this is on the floor. Here we see it's a plant. We see how much HP it has, what kind of stats it ha they are associated to that. You can do this also with this spear, for example, or with this wall. So you can examine everything by pressing X, controlling that thing over what you want to look at, and then press V, the small one. So that's that. All right, so we're we're done with uh, with that part. So we're going to move around and explore that place a little bit. Everything we need is already applied on, on in our uh, inventory, so we can't just go and explore. So we see our first enemy here, a Quoka. Now let's press X, move that thing over it, and press V to examine our first enemy. I strongly recommend you to, whenever you find a new enemy, have a little look at it, because you will learn a lot about it. For example, the most important things here are always how much HP does it have, and how much does it hurt. So basically, I always uh, check if something is new, how much... Do I need to hurt it to kill it, and how much will it hurt me while while trying so? So as we see here, this uh, thing can do up to 5 damage. I have 19 health, I have an AC of 6. Every point of AC can theoretically absorb one entire point of damage, so we should be pretty good to go. So the Coca is now standing right next to me, 
And all we need to do now is move on the same tile like the Quokka is. This will attack it. So I do this once now. And we miss the Quokka, and after that I headbutt the Quokka. So my attack with the sword failed, but the attack with the horns didn't. So how did that happen? Well, I'm a Minotaur, did you know? So if you press capital A, you see that screen which depicts the uh, innate abilities and mutations of a character. The Minotaur's uh, intrinsic attributes are a pair of horns and a reflexive headbutt when I get attacked in melee. This gives me a automatic retributional chance if somebody attacks me, and if I attack, I not only use the weapon, but also the horns, or there's a chance to use that, basically. And that's another reason why Minotaurs are really good. They have a ton of strength, they have a lot of health, and they have pretty nice extra stats that allow them to hit like a truck, as um, no matter what weapon they, they have. So we're going to explore further now here, and a part of the goal of the series is also to show you how to win this game. So we're going to explore in the series as deep as I can make it, and I'm going to explain as much as I can in the in the process of that. This series will always be a little bit all over the place because of the nature of Dungeon Crawl. It's an entirely randomized experience, and therefore you never know what's in the box. You will always have to adapt, and pretty much that's also a lot about how to succeed at this game. Adapt with the situation that comes across your path. For example, let's slaughter that bat real quickly. For example, I did start out as a fighter, but I might end my adventure absolutely as a mage if I want to, if I learn the according skills. So we have now learned how to move and how to kill stuff. That's pretty good, but how about all that loot? I mean, there's a spear on the floor, there's other stuff on the floor. We haven't interacted with things a single time yet. So here on the floor, there's a couple of Atropa tipped darts and Let's press X and B and investigate those. And the Tropa tip darts are really cool stuff. They are basically throwing darts. And when you check out the description, they are here. They are tipped in a substance that can cause blindness and confusion. So they are basically perfect to apply some some debuffs on your enemy. So I want to have that. So I move on to the tile where that stuff's lying around, press G to get it, and then I have it in my inventory. A couple of things happen now all at once. First off, down here in the description box, you see that I have picked them up and they are now associated with the letter E. And also up here, they appear now as the next third thing. So whenever I want to throw or fire something, this will be the next item I use. That's pretty good, isn't it? So here's a couple of methods what you can do if you are picking up stuff that you don't want anymore. So let's get over to that spear because I want to keep those darts. And let's check out that spear. It's a plus zero spear. Let's pre press small g again to pick it up. And I, and let's examine it. Press F and Let's, uh, let's talk a moment about how to check out how weapons work in this game, because that's also pretty important. As you see here, a weapon has a accuracy, that's basically a, a bias how easy or hard it is to hit with that. The spear is pretty good in that regard. The base damage, that's the uh, amount of damage this weapon can do without all modifiers the higher the more impact, and its base attack delay. This number states how long in turns it will take to attack once with it without any skill. And now you see something interesting down here. Here it says this weapon's minimum attack delay, 0.5, that means half a turn for one attack, is reached at skill level 12. So basically, once I am good enough with spears, I can actually attack twice, more than twice as often with that same weapon. And that's how you read these things. So if you want to know how a weapon works, you have to check out how this uh, how the stats are distributed here. So to give you a little bit of, bit of a better understanding, let's check out our longsword. The longsword here has only plus one base accuracy, less than the spear, but base damage 10. That's much, much more. 
but also a base attack delay of 1.4 so they, that sword is slower and also it reaches only a 0.7 minimum attack delay at skill level 14. that means the sword will always stay slower compared to the spear but it will always have a higher impact okay so this is how you read that but how to get rid of that we were talking about how to get rid of items so that's pretty easy you press small d and then you get into the drop menu and then you select all the items you want to drop here in that regard i press f mark that thing press enter it's gone a quicker way is press capital d to drop the most recent item you picked up capital d is pretty nifty when you picked up something you didn't want to pick up now let's keep exploring here and here's the first potion when you pick up a potion at first you have no clue what it does Potions are consumables which will buff you for a period of time and give you entirely new new things. So the good thing about it is they are really powerful. The bad thing about it is some are really detrimental and you should have identified them first. We can't do that right now because we lack the tools. Here's a plate armor on the ground. Now we can examine that and we see here the plate armor has a pretty high base armor rating and a pretty high encumbrance rating too. So you also get an information how your AC will change. So it's pretty nifty too. And because of my, uh, I'm a very strong and big minotaur, I'm going to pick that up for a later use. So now let's uh, get, let's keep going here and keep killing stuff. So I've reached level two now because I've gained enough experience and that always increases your base staffs here every level up will increase your hp your magic points sometimes you will gain a couple of attribute points and depending on the race you're playing sometimes some races develop new traits the more experience they they grow so that's that another thing which is quite useful to know is that you can make combat a little, a little bit more uh, automated so if you press the tap button you will automatically move towards your next target. So I keep pressing tab now and it will try to, to hit the next best target and, and attack it. Also pressing tab will try to move towards that target. It's called reckless fight and you will not be able to use it anymore once the HP of your character falls too low. That means if you ever run into lengthy fights with tons of enemies, which you already know that you will beat them, you can just hold the tap button and it will automatically stop if things go wrong and you drop on a lower HP amount anyway. So this is good to save some time and brain uh, capacities. And what I did here, as you see, I just hopped over the screen. That's when you press O, that's for Auto Explorer. This will give the game the permission to explore the dungeon for you. What it also will do, it will walk over each piece of treasure on the floor and try to pick it up or examine it and stop if it's something interesting. So this function is really pretty smart. It also stops when it sees enemies or everything similar. You see here these yellow steps, they depict where you walked last with the uh, Auto Explore. Auto Explore is really good to use when you feel really safe in a level and you feel as if you are already capable of killing everything there without any problem. So we're using Auto Explore here to get done with this dungeon level more quickly. All right, and now you saw we have skill increases here. So I haven't talked about skills yet. So skills are hidden behind the button M, small M. Don't ask me why, but it's like that. There's no, um, I can't explain that. And <laughs> here you see the skill screen here you can configure what kind of skills your character should learn it works like that whenever you gain experience points these this this part of your character also gains experience points and they are spread among those skills that you have highlighted a couple of things first when you start out with a game this is automatically set on the auto mode turn that off auto mode is not your friend Auto mode will try to highlight the skills according to what you use, make it in, making it impossible to study for something that 
you can't use yet properly because you know it will never set you on some training that you can't use but whatever i'm uh, promoting manual mode mostly because i like to have control about what i what my character learns now here in manual mode when you press the according letters that are associated to the skills i press a now as you see here it now get, got an asterisk and I will show you what that means. So I will now use this here. When pressing exclamation mark, you will switch through a couple of information layers. Right now we're at the cost information layer. That shows how much it costs to reach the next level, but I'm not interested in that. So I'm pressing exclamation mark here to show you this. This is the uh, percentile um, distribution. And the asterisk means something is focused. So I press A one more time, and now it's disabled. I turn it on, I focus, I turn off. That's how it works. To begin with, we are learning fighting, long blades, armor, and shields. That's all very nice and dandy, because these are the things our character wants to do. Here's a quick breakdown. Fighting increases your chance to hit, and your total amount of HP, and if I'm not mistaken, it also increases a little bit the, uh, to a small amount the amount of damage dealt, but I'm not entirely sure if that one is still a part or not. Long blades, that skill influences also your directly your your performance with those uh, weapons. You remember there's uh, all, not only the attack delay influence, but also how good you hit with those. The higher this number, the better basically. And then there's armor. This skill influences how well you can move with armor and how much benefit you have from that. Basically, if you are wearing a too heavy armor and have no armor skill, it might be even better to wear easy to uh, lighter armor instead of the heavy armor because it will encumber you too much. Also, this lowers the uh, the penalty on spell casting for wearing uh, an armor, but this doesn't influence our character here too much. And last but not least, shields. It works very similar like armor, but just for shields. So that's how we configure it. And we're going to go deeper into the skill system in the coming episodes, but I don't want, I don't, I don't want to uh, overstress that topic right now. What's important for starters is that you turn off the auto, auto mode and you, you know that these skills are, are pretty vital for the success of your character. What's also pretty good to skill later is throwing but we're, we're going to go over these things in the next couple of episodes. For the first few dungeon levels, you're good to go with that setup. I will change that accordingly whenever it is necessary. Okay, with the power of auto explore, we have finished our, our exploration of this level here, and now we will go downstairs. So going downstairs works with the command here. Give me a second, uh, list of commands. I want to show it on screen here. These here, these uh, these icons are used for staircase usage. I don't really know how to describe them. Sometimes this game uses symbols where I, as a German, don't know the the correct words. I will use uh, I, w I will use these here, for example. Like I had to, I would have no clue what this one is called, <laughs> but we're gonna get there. So. Use staircase is this command here, so we're going to step onto the staircase. One word here, if it has a yellow asterisk on its corner, that means you have never seen what's at the other end of that staircase. That's a good thing here. So we're going to go downstairs now. This uh, will bring us to the next level, and now we are sitting at dungeon level 2. With dungeon level 2, a couple of things change. First off, dungeon level 1 is easy. There, there's 90% of the time there's only harmless enemies up there, as long as you're a Minotaur fighter, that is. And from dungeon level 2 on, not only do the enemies grow fiercer, you also have a chance of facing unique enemies that are people that have a name that will only spawn once per run and they're especially deadly and you will have to play around these. Consider them like something like mini bosses that can randomly spawn and ruin your day. And that happens from dungeon level two on. Dungeon level one, you're safe from uniques. You, you, you won't ever find one of those uh, there. 
With that said, let's do another thing that I always do when I, when my character successfully reaches dungeon level 2, and that's using the first couple of scrolls in my inventory. So how to use scrolls, you might ask yourself. You press R, and then you get a selection of what kind of scrolls you have. So just like potions, you don't know what that does. You only have gibberish on the label, and don't try to memorize that gibberish. The next scroll, the next run that has this label, will do something else. It doesn't. There, there's no system that you could uh, that you could follow there. So now we read this scroll at the bottom of that staircase, and then we find out what it is. Whenever we read a scroll, we trigger the effect, and scrolls are mostly active one-time effects. Some have persistent effects, but none of them are really long, long-term things. Whereas potions are buffs, and sometimes even can have permanence, influ permanent influence on your character. So, with that being said, now we can ask where we want to blink. So we can control that with your uh, numpad, and that was a scroll of blinking. And now, henceforth, we will, we will know what a scroll of blinking is whenever we meet one. And that's how you identify stuff by trying it. I did that on the stair on the, on the bottom of that staircase because there's among many things a scroll of teleportation which will toss you randomly over the over, all over the place after a couple of turns. If you stand on a staircase you can just flee upstairs and trigger that in a harmless environment. I do this because there's also a, a scroll of magic mapping in the game which would uncover the entirety of that level. But sadly we didn't have one, but that's the reason why you stay on the staircase, just to check. Because you don't want to teleport randomly in dungeon level 2. So we're going to walk around here a little bit and discover the environment. There's a kobold, there's a giant cockroach, and most of these monsters here don't really deal uh, deal too much damage to be a threat for us. So let's read that. Ah, wonderful. I feel strangely unstable. So that's the scroll of teleportation. Let's get upstairs again and let's wait a moment. By the way, if you want to wait until you're healed back up, you just have to press 5 in the center of the num block. This also works to wait out eff effects like teleport. So here, your surroundings suddenly seem different. This scroll is highly desirable because here we didn't really get too much benefit out of that but it's one of your basic lifesavers in that game so we had it to, we had them together and that's a pretty good moment to mention them so scroll of teleportation is if you are ever in a situation where you know you won't win and you have to get out of here. You read one of those and you keep kiting until it pops and you pray to R and Jesus that it will take you somewhere where it is better. And the scroll of blinking is a much rarer instrument but much more powerful because as you've seen it, it did give me the control over where to go. And that's why it's one of the biggest oh shit buttons in the game. And it's a tragedy that I had to waste that one to discover it. We still have potions in the pot in the backpack, but I don't randomly identify those. Simple reason behind that, a couple of them are, like I said, have random eff effects and sometimes even random permanent effects, and I don't want to risk to mess up myself. Also, these potions are very powerful, and some of them can change a situation entirely. For example, this potion of might in our inventory, whenever we we will meet our first enemy that will that will be too much for us to beat, that potion will do the trick and save us. But we're going to get there once it is time. So here right next to me in the environment there's a faded altar of an unknown god. So let's exp uh, let's explore explore that and then go into the outro of that episode. So here you see an altar of a unknown god. In Dungeon Crawl you can also worship a deity. This religion system gives you access to an entirely new layer of skills and when you go to a faded altar it's a random button for worshipping some kind of god. You shouldn't do that when you're new and neither will we. So. 
we will now start exploring the rest of that uh, level in the next episode. And one last thing before we leave, I want to um, finish that because it, it pretty nicely rounds up that whole thing between skills and and weapons. As you see here, when we investigate our long sword here, it shows me what skill level is necessary to reach the minimum attack delay. So basically, as long as you, as soon as you have a skill level of 14 in long blades, you don't really need to train more than that. And the game actually respects that. And if you in investigate one of these we weapons, you can also just press small s here, and then it lets you set a target for a long blade. So we do this now, press S, and setting a skill training target at 14. We now go over to the buckler, and the buckler has the same thing. Skill level is four to remove the penalty. So we already reached that. So let's disable that for now. We won't get much more benefit out of more points and shields than that. And all other skill points are spent elsewhere better. So now we're going to learn throwing on top of that. So these um, skill level settings, that's pretty nifty. And if you press exclamation mark here, you can also check out your skill targets. If you forgot about it or you want to check out how they are. You can also set up your own skill targets here with that command. So you might want to uh, say what kind of, uh, I don't know, if you want to level up fighting to level 10 and then spread to something else, that's how you would do it. Okay, well, let's end it here. And in the next episode, we will discover the rest of that dungeon a little bit uh, deeper. I want, I will, talk about ranged combat and well let's see what happens in between i hope that was helpful for you drop me your comments down below if there are questions please ask away i will do my best to answer them and of course consider a thumbs up to this video and subscribe if you haven't done so already i would be really really delighted to have you there all you need to do is turn on the notification bell and not miss any of my daily content Beyond that, also, in the description box down there, you will also find my Twitch channel where I stream regularly, and you will also find my Discord channel there. And last but not least, also ways and means to support my video channel directly. I'd be more than delighted if you check them out, but don't you worry, if you don't want to or can't support, it doesn't matter. Watching this video to this point already means so much to me. I thank you for that. And I hope you're going to tune in for the next episode when we're getting this dude deeper into the dungeon and show you how it's done. Bye bye!